Hello, everyone. Welcome. We are back. Uh, we're going deeper and deeper into the crazy Toyota tuning world. Um, last time we did a Corona that was kept actually fairly calm when you consider it. This is completely different today. We are here. Well, first, let me have, tell everyone who's here, which I keep forgetting to do. This is Kyle Gaita, race car driver and the person who will tell us all about what I'm thinking is called Formula Atlantic with a Toyota engine. Uh, but I'm not that positive. We have Francis who will tell us all about who built it and how and why. We have Gerard, we have G who's gonna basically tell us the things that we're all forgetting about. And it's me, Carl. So here we are. Uh, basically, uh, the Starlet was a tiny little car um, yeah. that was brought into the world many years ago and someone decided to stuff a race car engine into it and we enjoy that very much. So Francis, tell us about this hey. car. Yes, this is a 1980 Toyota Starlet, which is, you know, um, very popular here in the Philippines. Well, not just in the Philippines, I mean, around the world. But it holds a special place here in the Philippines because uh, of its versatility, of its use in motorsports. This is highly used in slaloms, um, rallying, even circuit racing, and even drag racing for that matter. In fact, um, we can even call it the Camaro of our generation <laughs> because it's so widely modified, really? widely used for racing, you know. <laughs> you can beat on it and, it, uh, and, and it's a rear wheel base, short wheel base, rear wheel drive car, so it's very, very easy to modify. Plus the fact that Toyota has lots of edges to offer, meaning the possibilities are endless. And what mm -hmm. we have here now represents, you know, what a modified Toyota Starlet should be and for me, this is the, the benchmark in the Philippines as to how a starlet should be done. Uh, not just because of its rare TRD parts and the immaculate body and everything, but because of what it has under the hood, which is a uh, Formula Toyota Atlantica engine. Even though it's not the, the race spec engine with the uh, injectors and the dry sump system and everything, but it's still the base engine for the Toyota Atlantic series. And this one is owned by Michael Wilwaiko Gozon, who purchased it a long time ago from an elderly couple who he painstakingly hounded just to buy it because it was so stuck. Eh? Everything was in it already. <laughs> so, um, first, uh, it, it did have the first engine swap before, which is the normal 4AG 16 valve engine. Then a couple of years later, they sourced this uh, rare engine which was again rebuilt by noted Toyota race engine builder Phil Gulfin of Gulf Speed. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has, aside from the engine, it has this rare TRD goodies like the wheels, which is very, very costly nowadays. The period correct bucket seats TRD, the steering wheel, and the shift knob. But aside from that, it has a, it has a well rounded machine, meaning it has upgraded the uh, suspension, brakes suspension and even a support point roll cage so when they got the car it was stock yeah it was stock and wow. then they had it uh, repainted actually it's, it's on its secondary finish already because the owner is really very meticulous when it comes to the, uh, no, the paint finish especially it's a black color so it's very very hard to maintain also mm -hmm. can so you zoom in on the wheels stock. the wheels are trd toscos which are 13 by mm -hmm. 8s which are even though they have reproductions already in Malaysia, they're still very expensive. Eh? The repros. Can you zoom in on the wheels? Are those the four Sorry. cross? I can't see them that well. Are they the four cross? No, these aren't, no, these aren't the four cross. Uh, those no. are the palms you're referring to. These are, uh, no. these are different uh, Tosco wheels. Uh, synonymous. Yeah, these are the Tosco wheels. Yeah, synonymous with Toyota mm -hmm. selling uh, yeah. Corolla, Sprinter, mm -hmm. that era. Okay. Okay. The bold... Uh, door strip thing was something from the eighties, dude. It so was. Yeah, you know, it's so was. The story <laughs> or why? It, I don't know. It, it really eludes me now, but it, you know, this was a thing back in the day. Uh, you had the blue car with an orange stripe, and you had it even. Yes. The Toyotas had it. Yes. Even the Mitsubishi Lancers had it. Yep. And I think that, I think it was started off with all oh, those wheels. Yeah, those, I those wanted those. Real. I so wanted yes. those wheels. They're very, very expensive nowadays, especially no, the original saying, ones. Francis, you were saying that they make reproductions in Malaysia. Yeah, in Malaysia. Yeah. But you know, um, Colin of, of Speedstar, mm. the original designer of the Speedstar wheels, yeah, now sorry. remakes these wheels. Oh, really? oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he makes them. He, you know, the Star Sharks, the, um, yeah, SSRs. the uh, <laughs> SSR2s. He, he remakes it, but they're really pricey. 
Yeah, really? especially this really? one. Especially the original ones. And you that can tell is. the original ones because they only, the Tosco offered only them in 13 by 8 and 13 by 9s. So right. if you come across a 13 by 7, that's a reproduction or that's oh. a fake. Mm. <laughs> I, think even lo I think even local uh, wheel manufacturers back then tried to copy it. Remember the Limbos yes. and the Jernog? Yes, right, yeah. I think they Jer made those Jernog. Jernog. Yeah, Jernog. I think Jernog. 13 by 7. Jernog. So. I like that. Dude. Yeah. So if you come yes. across a 13 by 7. Of that was basically wheel. a yeah, reproduction. Yeah. Jernog, for yeah. those that don't know, and we've had this discussion, Kyle. <laughs> I, basically, I, 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 I had that Jernog wheels. I mean, they were, you know, they were heavier than the Steelies, but man, they were, you know, they were hit or miss. They were either super, super Matibai or they broke into pieces. Correct. <laughs> but when they broke, you just brought them, and they would break in a chunk, right? They would take a chunk. I would take a chunk out of it, and I'd bring it back, and they just recast it. <laughs> but that's all we had, dude. That's really yeah. all we had at the time, man. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and. And, and they, you know, they were the only ones faithfully copying those wheels, you know, yes. because everybody had, you know, Rally Brand had their own style, and you mm. know, uh, but Jernog was faithfully copying the mini lights, these types of wheels. Yeah, no, they were okay. So we, so we've dissected the wheels, and we've dissected the sticker, uh, the the door thing. We haven't talked about the engine yet. Francis, tell us about yeah, the yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah the engine is a Formula out? Spec uh, Atlantic engine, you know, mm. which is. Even though it's not the um, what you call this, the real uh, setup with with uh, the dry sump setup and the uh, fuel injector, injector. it's yeah. still the base engine which they rebuilt using Hasselgren parts, and it now runs on Weber's uh, and an electromotive ignition. Wait, I'll just uh, tap this uh, picture. Okay. You, you know, know Kyle, the, you were uh, talking to us. The Formula ahead, Atlantic. Then engine 4AG has a very distinctive uh, valve cover. You'll know it's a Formula Atlantic when you see it because it doesn't look like a 4AG. Um, does, I think this, does this car have that valve cover, Francis? Yes, yes, it has that valve yeah. cover. So you'll I'm see just, it's uh, different. Uh, you'll see it's different. Now, Formula Atlantic, I mean, well, why is this a big deal? You know, Formula Atlantic series started in the U.S. back in the, uh, or probably in the late 60s. And it, it morphed to, uh, it became very popular in North America, made its way to England, uh, Canada, and then it spread throughout the rest of the world. Um, but by then, um, the FIA had come in and created the, the, the Formula Mondial or World mm. you know, Formula. Yep. That pretty much killed Formula Atlantic. So the North American series created their own Formula Atlantic. The first Formula Atlantic had Cosworth BDD engines. The Ford Crossworth BDD. In 1990, the 4AG came in, and that you know propelled them. The Formula Atlantic series from 1990 to 98 was an all uh, Toyota uh, 4AG engine, dry sound, um, 260 plus horsepower, normally aspirated. Um, 98 or oh, 2002, it switched to the uh, Cosworth Mazda engine, but they were all basically Swift chassis. Uh, Swift chassis also the ones that make the Formula Toyota that ran in the Philippines. So that you know the history of the Formula Atlantic. So yeah, very sought after engine, very powerful. Um, yeah, it's a good race motor. Mm -hmm. So um, okay, if you're uh, this series, was this a, a like a basic Formula so Ford type it? series? It, it, it's an open wheel one make. Uh, basically, you know, Swift chassis with uh, with uh, Toyota 4AG engines, and there, there there's that uh, there's thing a, oh, valve yeah, okay. you see the valve cover mm -hmm. is completely different from a 4AG, yeah, uh, and that's yeah, a flat, kind of, yeah. it's flat, correct? Yeah, this has these little nodules up on front. Um, this one is running, uh, looks like Weber's, and now, yeah, Weber's, what a, that, that's a double linkage system, yeah, that's, that's a, a Maggard rally, rally spec, um. Throttle yeah. linkage. <laughs> you, so see on BDAs. Breaks, you, yeah, you, you see that on BDAs. Yeah, you see that on escort BDA engines, right? <laughs> yes, on Ford's. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's a rally spec uh, throttle linkage. Yeah, Something you, is also you, rare. You, you don't see that every day. Very anymore. rare. Yeah, it's very rare. That's what I saw. I said, "Oh, that's a, that's a double linkage system." <laughs> yeah, that's a double linkage system. Can you? Can you? Can you, can you it also what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Francis, can you like you yeah, that, move you your you U shape piece on top of the in the middle of the the Weber carburetors that like it looks like the oh the one kind of 
It's U shaped, but yeah, it's yeah. sideways. It, yeah, it's mm. like a, a U clamp. It looks like a U clamp. There are two of them. That's okay. actually a throttle cable system, a dual throttle cable system that was used on rally cars. So that when one broke, the other one was could be used. I mean, they broke back in the day. Go figure. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was it a, was it just a secondary system, or did they both work at the same time? Um, they both. I they believe both they work. both worked at the same time. Yeah, in conjunction. So if one snapped, you still had the other one. The uh, backup. Backup system. Okay, the backup system. Yeah, yeah okay, it's like, like, like a fuel pump. That's interesting. Yeah. So this right. car looks like it has Recaros. Those mm. are Recaros. No? Yeah, those yeah. are TRD TRD bucket seats. Oh, TRD. TRD correct. Oh. Yeah, TRD with the headrest at the back, and ah, uh, okay. of course the TRD steering wheel, the shift knob, and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the stack gauges. Oh my gosh! Wait, stack <laughs> is in you stack. Know? Or stack is in stack. stock OEM. Stack, stack race, stack, race. Stack. Okay, stack. got it. Yeah, oh, stack. It's stack gauges, mm -hmm. huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Digital gauges or like, like Look, those are uh, fuel pump, ah, uh, uh, water pressure, oil pressure, and the. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, Maybe analog. you're expecting then, Veglia gauges. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, I was thinking stack. What, yeah, what's, this the, is you know, stack. what's the what's the instrumentation? The tachometer. Wait a minute. It's. Oh, it looks yeah. like it has a stock gauge, I mean, but sitting on top yeah, of the yeah. uh, steering console is a, uh, a one big uh, tachometer. No. Yeah, just the yeah. tachometer. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it really isn't. Um, it, it's not a. It, it it's not like they didn't strip the interior to make it race. No, no. no. It has the, it's yeah. the last of complete interior. They just added right. the TRD bits, which is you know makes it. Great. it, it it's so funny to see a steering yeah. wheel. Look at this car. Uh, Look how basic these cars are. I know. Back and it, it's so funny that in front of the gear shift, there's nothing but a floor. <laughs> yeah, a little cubby yeah. hole for your, you know, That's cigarette. So, <laughs> you don't see that at all anymore. But. You know, you got to remember, back in 80, what was it, 81, 80, yeah. you know, in the early 80s, yeah. when this car came out, the Starlet was never, was never uh, sold as no. a sports car or yep. these were cheap cars yes. yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah i mean and we they had, we and we, the, the yeah. only ones that sold in the philippines were were two doors uh um, no there were, were four door did we have a four door yes um it competed yeah, it against four the four doors. okay because yeah, so. strangely okay so in the philippines they were known as a kp um 62 KP 62. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 62 because yeah, the, 62. The, in japan See, in the Philippines, we had a 3K model. That was the engine designation, 3K, yeah. 1200 3K. CC. Okay. The humble 3K. Um, I remember because we had a two-door. It was a company car. We had a two-door that one of the, the you know the engineers had used for his for his uh, company car, and very basic. And then yeah. I that car went to me, and I used that for a couple of years. I kept it stock, but used it for a couple of years. But later on, I was I was able to acquire a four-door KP61 from Japan. Mm -hmm. which had a 1300 cc engine and mm -hmm. so much different compared to the local cars yeah did it have the same the same grill and the bumper uh what same yeah, that? basically same, same yeah. looking the emblem was a little different it had yeah. a little it had you know it was a little bit different yeah um but it, but it had they both had square lights but the, mm -hmm. the yeah. big difference was the engine the the, the 1300 cc yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know it would keep up with the corolla 2t lift back in manila <laughs> yeah Really? Yeah. 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 Very light car. There was also mm -hmm. a, a Japan model of this which had the bug eye grill. I don't know if you're yeah. 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 the bug eye grill. That's also rare. Yeah. That's the yeah, KP60. We didn't have that. Yeah. No, we never had that one. We yeah, only we came out with that. one model, the KP62. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, the the life cycle was cut when Delta left. Uh, back in yeah. 84. So. Yeah, and you remember right after this, you know, we had people power revolution and yes, cars yeah. were gone. You know, yeah. matter of fact, the, the yeah. Lancer and the Galant was, you know, were right. Were well, around. actually, Nissan was the only one coming oh, out. Yeah, with Nissan, at that time. The Stanza, yeah, yeah the Stanza. Yeah. But uh, other than that, Toyota was out until 88. Right, yeah. So this car has, I have a lot of memories with these little cars. I mean, <laughs> my, like I said, mine were stock, but it, this is where I cut my teeth in, you know, these little cars, you know, rolling up and down Tagaytay, Baguio, Antipolo. Yeah, these were the little That's cars. That's the thing, yeah. these cars were never meant, as you said, never meant. 
super uh, sporty. It's really oh. an economy car. No, uh, they were yeah, they were cheap, so, and uh, you know they, they, were, they were okay. They were, but you know, people were leaning towards the Corolla because it was a bigger car. Yes, yeah, and it had more luxury features. You know, mm -hmm. so the Starlet, although popular, I don't know that it sold as well as the Corolla did. No, I don't think so. Well, I don't think anything sold so, so at that well time. As the I think was. yeah, the Corolla and the Corona Silver Edition were the movers for and, them. And, uh, and, and they rusted. You know, they 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 yeah. they, <laughs> cars, they all rusted. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> Yep, yep. And, yeah. Well, yeah. most most of the '80s cars did. So yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> so what it did you do with your know. cars, Kyle? Well, you know, mine was stock. I mean, I you know my the four door one. I remember I got these from a surplus. They were thirteen inch, uh, thirteen by six Hayashi racing. You know what that looks like, Diva Francis? Yeah. The Hayashi yeah, racing. Yeah. Yeah, mm. So I had that with Continental tires and. Oh. You know, the, the one of the reasons I, I liked the Starlet so much was, well, number one, it was very light. You know, it had a 1300cc engine, mm. um, but it had rack and pinion. It had it yes. had uh, yeah, coil yeah. sprung rear suspension, you know, yeah, and yeah. It, was, yeah. it didn't have that archaic leaf swing suspension. So the yes, car that really was the rear. Rear. Yeah. 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 and it handled really, yeah. really well. Mm. Most of the, I know, were circulating ball steering. Oh, oh. Yeah, this and you could, also, I know, you could also you could also replace the rear differential with those coming from a Troeno or a DX. Which, which, they which what everybody right did. <laughs> because yeah. you know, the ones that came in Manila, um, it, it had a tiny differential. Now, it, you know, you know the Miata, Carl, you know, has a the, the one point six has a tiny uh, six inch differential. Yeah. The Starlet had a five point six inch differential. So nothing over a hundred, nothing over a hundred, everything, anything over a hundred yeah. would destroy the differential. Yeah, it would, it would break the ring here. You know, but it's like, it's like the ring. So people would change yeah, it. The bungo. Bungo. <laughs> yeah, from a 4AG. That, that was the yeah. thing to do. And, and in my days, when when I was in college, uh, the, the big swap then was either a 2T, 2TG, or an yes. 18RG. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was swap on. The 4AG it came the in the and yeah. if you didn't have money for an LSD differential, you'd make posse weld or posse, <laughs> <laughs> okay. which is sort of like a spool. <laughs> which why when you were turning and you were going to a corner, yeah. the tires would chirp, the rear tires would chirp because it doesn't <laughs> engage. But it was good for enough for slalom for doing one eighties and three sixties. And, and, and you know, you know the, the reason why they started became so famous with the racing was when this car came out in Japan. Uh, they, they had they had a little Japanese racing series, 1300cc. Yeah, the M2, dominating M2. cars then was the little Nissan Sunny. Yeah, um, that was, yeah, that's and then working. Toyota came out with, with Starlet, no? And, mm. it, and it came out with those flares. And the car yeah, just dominated. The N2 really flares. Yeah. The N2 flares. When those N2 yes. flares came out, everybody wanted it. Yes. <laughs> and it, the car looked really good. Yeah, I because it was short wheelbase, yeah. you know, it was, it was, it was, you could put a big motor, short wheel. It was mm. a perfect recipe for slalom. This yeah, remember the the three K stage three where it was it wasn't slanted anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, was, yeah, diba? right, right, right. Yeah, the three K E nakatayu siya. Three K nakatayu na, de ba? <laughs> and it revved and it revved to like something like well, almost nine thousand RPM, like super wow. high revving engine. Yeah, yeah. that K really? engine is one tough motor. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that the difference in that motor was it was a cross flow head. Um, yeah, it was a D, yeah. It, it was a the, 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 the 3K, 4K, 2K, they were all on the, the The intake and the exhaust were all on one side. Yes, one side. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even a cross flow head then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are rare engines, if you could find yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super rare. Yeah. Imagine from that little motor, there. it made 180 there horsepower. Yeah. Those are the two flares. <laughs> there, man. I mean, yeah. iconic. Yeah. So, it's an iconic nice. look. Even I here, remember even, that. Even here, I mean, this car is highly sought after. Mm. In the U.S.? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did it release in the U.S.? It Too did. We only had one model. We only had one model, which had the 1300cc, 4K. We had a fuel injected. Mm. And it was only a three-door. I mean, a two-door. Two-door, And yeah. that was the last of the series. So, yeah. We had the mm. carburetor, and then later on, the fuel injected. Mm. Is it what what's involved in doing an engine swap here? Is it um are you changing mounting points? Uh or is it fairly straightforward? If you like when you like when when the like Francis, like when they changed from the original engine to the the Atlantic one, the Formula Atlantic one, 
was it hard or this is no not really just... because, actually it's very easy for, uh, to perform engine swaps on toyota because of the size of the engine bay you just have to either reposition the engine mounts forward or backwards in some cases for slalom guys they they mount it slightly rearwards for better weight distribution they just cut off some of the tunnel the transmission tunnel stuff it's fairly easy it's just a and, case and, of mounting the uh, no, engine mounts and, Re -re repositioning here's the, here's the thing with toyota a lot of their parts were off the shelf that you could pick from other cars they shared a yeah. lot of components yeah yeah you know so that you could you know and they so manufacturing made it simple um a cross member from another make you could bolt onto another car mm. so that made swapping components super easy yeah and they didn't have any electronics involved so it's you yeah know, just yeah. for example fuel pump or electric fuel pump it's very easy for example because i had a corolla dx mm. and you could and that had a 3k you could no i'm sorry it had a 4k you 4K. could put a 2t engine in it yeah. without changing the cross member mm. or the engine support yeah the mm. only difference was because the 4k was a smaller motor when you put in the 2t it sat higher mm. so you know little things like that is yeah. what made you know pe what made toyota popular with the you know with the street racing crowd you know yeah, and the yeah. transmissions were also interchangeable remember the t50 yeah, yeah exactly and yeah, the one yeah. that goes click 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 you know yes yes <laughs> yes yeah because yeah. i read my, my corolla i remember getting a uh the front suspension arm mcpherson strut and rear axle from a from a, a Troeno in Japan, mm. both on, both on the hub. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Even the knuckles and everything. Everything. This and one has upgraded. Uh, this one has upgraded. Uh, no, suspension already. It has ZL coilovers and mm. endless brakes. So, yeah. That's, That's interesting, huh? Um, so, when you well, then when you do something like reposition the uh, uh, the thing, when you reposition. The engine, the engine like you're moving it back yeah you're moving it back are you are you able what do you have to do? you have to put a a separate like relocating mount system or what yeah Is you have to make and uh, you have to make new mounts uh, you, you weld it okay so that's all cheap metal yeah that's all mm -hmm. all right, all right. <laughs> you said yeah, one of the other things um go ahead go ahead go ahead it also has this uh electromotive ignition system which mm -hmm. back then when you had this it was already yeah. annoying high tech you know now yeah. individual coil packs but nowadays it's normal to see on oh, on, OEM. Norm, on oem diba? but back yeah. then the individual coil packs were you know were already high tech this one has that the crack trigger electromotive ignition system but uh so, francis so this car yeah. because the 4ag you know this uh, of course originally this had an ecu now yeah. it's running a weber carburetor yeah it's so, manual mechanical and everything mechanical <laughs> yeah oh, yeah okay. it's just uh, the, the only modern thing here is it's the distributor you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but you know the motor was made by sil gulpin you know? yeah yeah <laughs> was just synonymous with i know with yes. Toyota yes. and drag still race. Is. i mean he knew and he still is. he he knows this stuff yeah yeah what's the biggest engine you could put into this um, 18 RG man, with back in college, <laughs> it was ridiculous. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if a one UZ Toyota V8 engine would fit in here because I've seen, it, yeah, because on the DX it fit eh. We have a DX here with the one UZ engine, yeah. mm -hmm. so but, I'm not sure. No, but this is smaller than the than the DX, so like yeah, you, you know, nowadays they'll put they'll make anything fit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. If they have to cut up the chassis to make it fit, they'll do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? true. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Listen, one you say on the DX pits. Eh? Mm. <laughs> no, there's a thing. Like when we talk to uh, modern car engineers, um, and and this this happened with, you know, okay, uh, everyone's going to three cylinder engines now, right? Yeah. Um, and it's sure. it's largely a it's a size, and packaging. Uh, there, there are positives to size and packaging as well as to uh, efficiencies. No? And the reason uh, we, we asked them, we asked like when, when we saw the latest Mirage or whatever, we said, Are you, uh, can you put in a bigger engine? And they said, um, ideally, no more. There, in other words, it's not like before where there was a lot of empty space in an engine, bay, yeah. in an engine bay. Remember That's not that. the case anymore. Um, they really, you know, it, 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 you're going to have to cut massive sheet metal to put in something larger. And their reasoning is... Um, because they can redesign the car completely around only one engine, that means that there are advantages for 
uh, setting it up for safety features, for space mm. inside. The, that's why we have bigger cabins inside the cars now because they've really compressed and they'll only get up to, like, let's say, three-cylinder engines, uh, which are now only possible, right, because uh, they're no longer as buzzy as before, yeah. right? They, uh, they're yeah, no longer uh, as unbalanced. And, and, you know, with, 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 you know, now they, they're, they're boosting everything. Everything's turbocharged. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's how they're making the power now. That's how they're getting the torque, you know? Yep. From these tiny little engines. Turbo and the um, mild hybrid system. Yeah. Did anyone make an electric star that? I guess, I guess. Yeah. And that would be easily. fun. They already did an um, <laughs> electric powered Volkswagen. Whatever. You know, yeah. it, 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 it's a matter of time. Pretty yeah. soon we'll have electric kits that, that, that's readily available. It, it's convert them, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if you think I about, mean, you guys um, have heard of you know California EV who who makes you know electric Porsches, you yeah, know, VW buses. Yeah, yeah. You see their work, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You should go to them, Kyle. I, I know they're in San Diego. I really you should it. go there and we should talk about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, do it, do yeah. it, do it. That would be a good. Feature, so we want to yeah. we want to talk about their thing. Yeah, yeah. There's this uh, tuner in the states named Busy Arizona. He has his Porsche, which looks like a 935 Porsche, mm -hmm. but it's electric powered, man. <laughs> really? It looks like an old oh. 935 race car with the flares and everything, mm -hmm. but it's electric powered. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is it a Porsche body and structure? Yeah, it's a Porsche body, which he made to look like a real 935, but it doesn't have any okay. engine. It's, it's electric powered. Car. Electric. Uh, wow. yeah. It's probably way faster than it ever was. <laughs> I think so too. Most Lighter like. even, most likely. Yeah. And it looks like a real 935. Do you know one? Do you know? Is it is it one electric? It. Uh, how many motors are there? One or two? Just one. Uh, usually one. Just one. And it's probably in the in the stock location, and in probably the, maybe bolted onto the stock transmission because you can do that now. You know. Rear, yeah. And and, the, and the, the the great thing is you can actually even use the transmission. You could put it in I mean, any you gear. You don't need a, You don't need a yeah. traditional transmission anymore. You, you don't, know. but you know, because the problem is with these old cars, how do you retrofit a drive a drive train from an electric yeah. motor? They don't have yeah. any. So, so what they do is they have an adapter plate that bolts onto the stock transmission. Mm -hmm. No need for clutch. You put it in gear, you drive it away, you can shift it to another gear, and because you know the mo electric motor spins to what? You know, endless RPM, you know? Yes, yes. So a lot of these electric EV cars, these Ford, Porsches, VW, Beetles, they have the transmission in place. Mm. So when do you? You don't. You how don't does that feel? You the can, trans. You can how? put it in one gear and take off. You can put it in okay. second gear and take off. Yeah. And just leave it in gear. So would you shift it at all or not? No, you don't have to. Ideally, no. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. It's like a small Tamiya, uh, you know, <laughs> mini four wheel drive race yes. thing. Exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> we just spin. You know. know? Mm. Just so what would happen started. if you were okay? Uh, what would happen? Wow. I guess theoretically, I mean, you would have a you know a taller gear ratio. Yeah, technically, mm -hmm. you'd probably go faster at top speed. But you know, you got to remember, electric motors can spin to what I don't know, twenty-four thousand <laughs> RPM. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah I don't know, but it's not a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, well and more in, a, in the zero instantaneous torque. So basically, you know, you don't really need to. I mean, you could like they were saying, you could put it in any gear and drive away. Hmm. But does that mean you would? Um, okay, no, like so in other words, right? That's a two-speed transfer case. So yeah, yeah. So okay, I can't get my head around that one right now. <laughs> okay. um, but well, what, would it, what would it be like to shift that? What would it be like to shift that like you normally do? I don't know. I've never. I guess it, was, it would just give you that extra kick, just like with the Titan. You know, Kyle, you should go find out. I should go find it. Really, I've, that been, out. I've been curious about that. So, yeah, you should go find out. Say, can we try your car? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't know how that would feel. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, would you blip it? Would you? I don't know. No, there's no clutch. That's true too. Okay, so you're okay. <laughs> so, but you could physically shift gears while driving, or not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We should well, do a feature on it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're there. Yeah. Um, cause so, yeah. Okay. So basically, you're just select. So if you're either selecting a mode, which would, okay, but it wouldn't adjust how, well, could it? It could, 
it could adjust how fast you go if you go into fifth and you're it, you know what it would do it well okay this is all theoretical right but maybe maybe what it would allow you to do is choose whether or not you're gonna do a drag race and start in first or do a long speed drive and start in fourth or something i don't know Probably. that'd be wild okay getting back <laughs> to the starlet <laughs> sorry um so what what are the other things that people have done with starlets francis or kyle i mean what we, what are the craziest oh. things you've seen oh many engine swaps um I name it say probably an electric car in the future probably somebody's building an electric car as we speak uh but you know these cars are hard to come by first first and yeah. foremost they're, they're not they're not readily available anymore um i remember looking at one here about 10 years ago on craigslist and it was being sold for at that time about 2500 dollars, and it was it needed a lot of work a lot of work so you know i didn't get it but uh, yeah, they're hard to come by. Really yeah, hard the to most, come by. The most interesting I came across was, it was so many years ago. Eh? Um, Nodalas had this uh, bug eye starlet specifically made for um, slalom and rally cross. It had an extreme setback, eh? engine setback. Eh? I think the name of the, there was this engineer race car rally driver who did that setback. Eh? It was a uh, real. It was really radical that the end the transmission tunnel was so huge. Just for I guess for weight transfer and weight distribution. They had that before it. It was a race I, I car. Kinda, I kinda remember that car. And yeah, that, I kinda remember that. It was car. engineer. Even, I, I forgot the name of the engineer who did that. The engineer was it Neo Bolaños? I don't know if it was Neo Bolaños. Uh, I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe not. Yeah. But I remember I, I remember seeing that car back in the day. Yeah, it has an extreme engine setback, right? It had yeah, a huge yeah. transmission tunnel inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well there was and a time I saw, its I saw rear, some... it sat on its rear like this. It wasn't, you know, raked, it was sitting on yeah. its back. And the wheelbase seemed a little bit off compared to the fender flares. But I think it had a sort of elongated wheelbase. Yeah, like they moved the caster up front then. That's what yeah, right. The yeah, they yeah, moved yeah. the caster up front and then they get them the camber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember if you talk about like the hot hatches of Europe for a while, they were putting the engines in the rear. I mean, mm, yeah. they moved the entire engine into the back and just ran. Oh, and that was made famous by uh, that uh, Kia Pride uh, that was featured on Jay Leno. Jay Leno actually bought that car. It was a yeah, I think I saw uh, that. It yeah. was a Ford. It was a Ford Festiva, but it was a, basically mm -hmm. a Kia Pride. Kia Pride. That yeah. Somebody <laughs> had stuck a mid-engine Ford uh, V6 from a I what was that car? Uh, well, it was a Ford V6 motor SVO, and they stuck it in the middle, and that car yeah. became popular. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, so hmm. basically we've kind of dissected Francis' latest little toy, uh, or toy he's featuring, which is a, what year is this, Francis? 1980. 1980. A 1980 <laughs> Starlet with the Starlet Formula Atlantic engine. Do we have any more interior shots of that car? I mean, uh, you know, it's got a roll cage in it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has a roll cage in hmm. it. Is that a Cusco roll bar? Or is that yes, a, that's a Cusco roll bar. A, I knew it. I mean, the Cusco blue, how can you not? It's yeah, unmistakable. unmistakable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and look at that. He even has it there. There you go. Yeah, that's there. a Cusco. And the rear strut bar. And the rear strut bar. Wow. Yeah. That's, those so, uh, are the headrests, so. Even up to the hard. back, even the carpeting. That's so hard to find now. That's original pa, yung carpet. Yeah, I think oh, I'm thinking, wow. yes, even the uh, yeah, sidings, yeah. the door cards and everything. And you know, I think we, only, we only came in one color. That color, no? Beige. Yeah, the, yeah, the beige color. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm black, no? It was only was a... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. think the four doors were even used as taxis before. Eh? They were, that's uh, right. They were, they were the four taxis. doors. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But this oh. these hatches are really, I know, that uh, more collectible than the four yeah. doors. Eh? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. What did it sound like, man? What does that car sound like? Oh, you should hear that. It has a, it has a, um, it has a the full exhaust. Eh? It turns out to the, he called it a scav, scav. I'm sure Kyle knows that. Yeah, it the turns scavenger the, pipe. The well, scavenger, scavenger pipe. pipe basically is a, is, a, is, a, is a short pipe. Right after the headers, it just drops right by the transmission yeah. underneath, underneath the so transmission. No yeah, muffler. So it's pretty loud. I did, that, I did that once. It lasted a day. <laughs> it was a headache, wasn't it? 
<laughs> I, ga- I gave up. I, I thought it looked, it was the coolest thing. I put it on my Corona, which had an 18R, and it it lasted a day. I said, this is just the most oh, yeah. dumb thing I've ever done. So. <laughs> It sounded yeah, drove the car to school every day, right? So it did, and 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 all the all the dust would come up right from the side of the car. Yeah, because of the downpipe, the 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 tip. <laughs> yeah, I did that to my pickup. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, there's the stack. There's but the stack, you see, stock gauges. Right? Huh? Well, up on the yeah, tachometer, yeah. We didn't even have a tachometer back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no tachometer. <laughs> yeah, the other gauge was for the temp and the gas gauge. Right. And then yeah, the speedometer. Yeah. But, you know, it was such a simple dashboard. Yeah. No? It was very endearing. I mean, yeah. Yes. Exactly. I think part of it, like the lower part of it, there, there you go. Yeah. See, I mean, look at that. You know, yeah. that that stock air, air vent on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No air conditioning, but it had an air vent. It had a blower system. Mm. I don't know if that no had air. Conditioning. That, yep. Yeah. Look at that, man. Yeah, even the door cards of the uh, the panels. Oh, the oh, panels. The panel, are, no, no, the kick panel is still there. Up. Very pristine. Wow. So, no, this this car had air conditioning. This yeah, because of the yeah. You can tell, but that's an <laughs> OEM. That's an OEM vent. Yeah, that's an OEM. Yeah, that's an OEM oh. vent. And done, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and these are what you the you were, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's the vanguard. Yeah, that's the, there. You that's go, the vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> double <laughs> throttle linkage. Yeah, just in case the other one breaks. <laughs> yeah, but there was no yeah. advantage. There was no like performance advantage to this, and, no, or, or sensitivity it was, advantage. It was no, really just. It a, was, no, right. it was all purely for reliability. I mean, like you know, like I said, you know, <laughs> who, who broke throttle? Cable? But that's what it was back in the day. You broke a throttle cable. It was more heavy duty, I would say. Boy, I bet that's hard to find that that magard. Here yeah. Pa yeah. yeah, this is the electro mode, the coil packs for the oh, individual oh. cylinder. They shared oh. two cylinders shared a single coil pack. Oh, okay. Nowadays, that's okay. pretty common, eh? Diba? Yeah, but I'm batch firing, sir. No. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Which car manufacturers adopted that, diba? Oh, 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 oh. They oh. upgraded the, no, um... Oh, yeah, everything's in a now coil pack system, no? Yeah. <laughs> complete, Even complete, the washer is very clean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, those are those, those Tosco TRD type headers. Uh, those probably yeah, locally yeah. manufactured, no? no? Yeah, the or... bundle of snakes type. Uh, oh, I yeah. remember those. The bundle of snakes. The bundle of snakes <laughs> type of uh, header. The only thing was it produced a lot of heat under hood heat, eh? which is oh, why yeah. this one has a like a cover for may the brake master. Yeah, may heat shields mm. the brake master because it generated. Yes. Yeah, there, tama, there you tama. go. Tama. <laughs> yeah, and those, yeah are those I'm getting those, the hang of the those, sharings. I just saw the gears <laughs> here in front. Huh? Yeah, those are Toda Cam gears. gears. Yeah, yeah, Toda Cam gears. Yeah, the those Formula stuff. Atlantic valve cover, very distinct. Yeah. Okay, that's what you were guys are talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you picture because if you look at a, a regular four AG sixteen valve one point six, completely different. Yeah, mm. it's flat with the Toyota markings. This yeah, one doesn't yeah, have it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? What's the point of that? Any particular reason? I don't know. I mean, I think because it mated directly to the monocoque tub of the. Swift chassis. Yeah. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, oh, I'm not oh, sure. It could have been a stress point, you know? Because yeah. they don't have mounting points, right? No, they're so, they're fixed. Uh, they're rigid mounted to the chassis. Yeah, they're, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're part of the they're part of the another uh, structure. The so structure, would this be stronger? Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 It Very was standard cool. practice, I guess, brought on by Lotus. The, <laughs> what they did yeah, before, yeah. right? That's, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Stressed, uh, stressed, I know. Stressed, stressed member. component, yeah, stressed member. Yeah. That was the coil over in uh, no? You were saying this yeah. is an uh, zeal coil overs and coil endless, coil uh, endless brakes and uh, uh, rotors. rotors. Are they also calipers. zeal the whole, all four front and rear? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Specifically for the starlet, mm-hmm. which I think also shares some. Well, I don't know if the. Measurements are the same with the Troeno, the E86. I'm not sure though. Or well, the DX. We, can't, we can't see the brakes here anyway, but I like the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, the suspension <laughs> arms on the Troeno were usually longer, so if you put them on earlier cars like a Starlet, they would stick oh. out. I mean, it was All a right. thing, you know. That was one way to make your track wider. Mm. 
They had different suspension arms. I think the DX and the Trueno shared the same thing. Yeah. Yes, more yes or they less. did. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, those yeah, are the, my, the, diff, the diff of my Corolla because it had a like, really tiny, you know, like, that broke. I got one from other in the junkyard. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, yeah, it's, very nice. Very nice. One of the well-built starlets we have here. Yeah, yeah, mm. cool. Have you driven think... it, Francis? No, I haven't driven it. <laughs> but it really sounds nice, you know. I mean. And, you know, we're just probably we we probably just see the outside of this car. I bet underneath, if you take those wheels off, I bet it's like showroom quality. Yeah, no? yeah. it's show quality. Show yeah, quality. I can imagine. Yeah. All right, that's how Pinoys do cars. There, <laughs> everything's super machine. Yeah. It's one of the well-built stars. I haven't come across a star as good as this. Ah. I mean, this much and this much part, and this much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing that he got the car almost, like you said, no, yeah, almost pristine, yeah, no, that that's yeah. a rarity in itself. Yeah. So even the bumpers, if you see the bumpers, they're all straight. The bumper oh, extension. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to start, this is the one. Yeah. This is right. the one. All right, so we've basically gone through this one, this little episode again, uh, playing with Toyotas. Uh, uh, the Starlet, the tiny little Starlet that was nothing but an Econobox that became something awesome, largely because of its size and weight, right? Um, yeah. uh, in this case, this one, you plunked in, someone plunked in a Formula Atlantic engine, uh, which is very, very uh, brand proper uh, in terms of what they put into it. Uh, it's an awesome little car, man. I wish we'd be able to drive it. It'd be cool. Uh, so, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. We have been playing with little Toyota stuff again. Um, I'm probably going to do it again more often because it's just kind of our area. Uh, <laughs> and it, I mean, okay, to those who don't know this, it's really, really Ka El Gaeta's area. <laughs> very, very fast Toyotas. So, um, and his names and championships and so on attest to that. So, thank you very, very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, this has been Ka El Gaeta. This has been G. This has been Francis. And this has been me, Carl. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll find something fun to play with next time. Tell us what you want to find. Tell us if you've seen any cars that you want to take a look at. And we're going to have Kyle go find some stuff for us from Southern California, too. Cool electric <laughs> cars <you>. next. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, seriously, dude, we got to do that. We got to find we that guy. That. You know, the way how the works, man. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very, very much, everyone. Goodbye. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>